Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Hawkins, and welcome to an Imperia Let's Play. Uh, we're going to spend about two years in game, and everything's not quite finished yet, but uh, there's enough there that you'll be able to see what a few typical turns look like in Imperia and some of the things that you can do, especially with some of the new additions. Let's go ahead and start a new game. Let the system load. Now, of course, eventually you will be able to set all this up. You'll be able to set up your empire parameters, your emperor. Um, you'll be able to set all that up yourself, but for now it kind of just generates a, a generic empire. Now I've tweaked some settings with the starting empire to hopefully make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, in the version that I'm going to release, uh, there shouldn't be as much action in the first maybe two to three years. Your I just want to be able to kind of show some different things, events, things like that. So, so a few things have changed if you watched the previous video. A um, couple of very important things. We finally now have a Emperor screen that's a little bit more up to date. Now this will continue to evolve. Um, in line with that, you see what's called political allies and political enemies. So now that there is more of a character system in the game and characters remember your actions and characters have uh, feelings about each other, kind of like Crusader Kings, um, this system can now start to evolve. So this is your power rating up here. Now before it was kind of a generic, uh, it was based on your intelligence and your uh, popular support and a few other factors. Um, it's evolved now to where it's computed by taking 20% of your popular support and then taking 5% of all characters' power that are allied to you. So you can see that it's more important to get larger more powerful people under your sway, sector governors, uh, powerful um, generals, things like that. And of course generals that do not have an army have no power because their their power is determined entirely by their army. So you can see my power is now 10. Uh, in other games it would start usually in the 40 to 50 range. So this has made it a little more challenging. You'll see that uh, edicts that typically didn't take a whole lot of time uh, now take considerably more time if you have the empire involved course if you just have the local governments or system or sector governments involved uh, you won't see a difference because you as the Emperor are not directly involved. Alright so let's go back to the main screen let's kind of see what we have here. We've got a pretty diverse Empire. Now one thing I do notice is that we don't have a very big mission range. This green circle basically shows the range in which you can send uh, colony ships, um, uh, ships that build things, etc. So you can send missions to other systems uh, and support uh, things like surveys and, and, and other things like that. Now, you can survey any system that right now. That was a change made to the program to allow people to explore. Of course, it can take a while. Um, so if you hit the colonization button, this is C, you can see we have colonized migration submode. Um, basically anywhere that the blue touches, let's say Savo Island system. So any planet that is in this radius, in this case actually Archangel is really the only one, um, there can be migration. Now this circle will expand as science is developed and better engines are developed in the course of the game. Right now that is not in play. So you can see a system like Savo Island can really only migrate a limited amount while the, in, in the inside, what we would call the core systems, have a lot of choice in where to go. So we'll go back to the um, mission mode here. Now the first thing I do when I look at a new game is I look at my planets. So we go to the intelligence button and we look and again I've made a few changes to kind of get some action going early. So we can see that Maya has a fairly high unemployment rate, 25 percent, and Columbus has a 15 percent unemployment rate. Uh, Carnegie also is in red, that means their maximum development level has been reached, so they can't really grow anymore, so that may be an issue. Also, all my planets are losing at least a small amount of money. Um, nothing that's going to cause them to be bankrupt immediately, but something to consider. So we go to the next tab, we look at our material and food, we see if any uh, system or, or planet is on the verge of running out of food or materials, and right now, uh, that's really not the case. We have four planets that have a surplus. Uh, and then most other planets look like they have anywhere from 16 to 26 years worth of uh, materials. So uh, if they do nothing, they build nothing, if they don't grow, then they'll have plenty of time to, uh, to grow. So let's take a look at 
Maya. Let's see what's going on over with that. All right, so this screen has changed a little bit. I can, we continue to evolve the AI. I know people that have watched it have said, wow, that, there's a lot of different stuff going on there. Um, you should have seen the first AI UI, believe me. Uh, Pavlos and I have worked very hard to make this as uh, utilitarian as we can. So we look at the uh, production, and we go to secondary, and this is where you find the unemployment, so of course 25%. So we need to figure out why is it? Is it that people don't want to work? Or is it people just don't have any jobs? There's nowhere to work. So we look at uh, science. That looks pretty well fully employed. We look at retail. It's pretty well fully employed. Uh, we look at uh, manufacturing. Looks like that's fully employed. We look at ag. Oh, well, there's a lot of opportunity in agriculture. So let's take a look as to why. Now over here we have what's called the desirability index. So when, when your pops have a choice, when they're unemployed uh, or when they're unhappy where they work, there's an algorithm that takes into account several things, but, but one of the biggest ones is this desirability index. So essentially, the higher it is, uh, the more attractive that sector is to an unemployed pop or a pop that's employed but, but is, is unhappy with where they're at. So we look at um, desirability. Anything below a 1 is generally considered undesirable. And remember, this scales in relation to the uh, development level of the planet. So, um, you know, development level of 4 this $2,500 wage might look really good, and the desirability would be a lot higher. Um, and there is some built-in factors. Uh, agriculture is generally considered less desirable than manufacturing and retail, which is, are considered less desirable than service or government. So we look here, so we know we have opportunity employment. Now we have a new tab here. It's called GovMill. This lets us see uh, how our uh, admin is calculated, our ADM. A lot of people have asked, well, I don't understand how that number is generated. So this, this kind of lays it out. So we have 107 million people employed in the government sector. And remember, it's not just government. It's your utilities. It's your uh, infrastructure. It's you know your police, your fire stations, your hospitals, everything that's kind of part of that civic, civil sector. So it takes 20 million pops um, to create one ADM. So right now we can see, and you get one ADM always. So uh, our multiplier is 1.0. Now this can be increased if you're a system or sector capital, imperial capital, if you're a governmental nexus, or if you have built the sector up. So you'll see that multiplier here. So you take 20 into 107, yeah, that's 5, times multiplier 1, plus the 1 free, and you get 6. So just a little bit more clarity on how to build up that ADM. So we can see the employment here is uh, fully employed. So. Uh, there's really no room to move. So if we're going to do something with this planet, we really need to look at the agriculture sector. Now, it's not a very nice planet. Um, now I'm not sure. You have to decide, and this is kind of one of the many things as an emperor, you have to decide, do I really want to create jobs in a sector that it doesn't make a lot of sense to do so? Because it costs a lot of money. If you go to our economic sector, so you'll see our agriculture, we're losing money. And we're losing money in part because it's not a very nice planet. This is a water planet, but for whatever reason, it's very difficult to grow crops. So I have to decide, okay, if I don't want this planet to start getting upset, what do I need to do? I could call in the military. I do have an army on the planet. Um, I don't know. It's a fairly large army. It's got a suppression value of 51. So I could perhaps change the stance of that army to uh, suppress or intimidate the population if I want to feel more tyrannical. But we're not quite there yet. Let's, uh, let's be a little more uh, nationalist and see what we can do. All right, so we're going to go into production. We're going to decide just for the sake of it, yes, let's create some jobs. So there's several ways to do this. Now, the easiest way uh, and the most hands-off way is to hope that your viceroy notices, hey, my agriculture sector, I need more jobs because I have a high unemployment. And some viceroys will do this. They are smart enough. A lot of times this is determined by their intelligence and will. Some viceroys are not smart enough, or they don't like that sector, and they're not willing to see it grow. It depends a lot on the statistics. So as you get to know your characters, you'll, you'll understand more what to do. So let's take a look at Isabel. She's young. She's not very smart. That may be one reason why we, we're having issues. Let's talk to her. Let's see what she's up to. All right, what can I do for you today? What can I do for you indeed? Well. Let's make agriculture a little bit more desirable. Let's see if she's willing to raise the sector wages for agriculture. Oh, good, she is. Right away, Your Excellency, the people will be pleased. I'll raise agriculture wages by $454 immediately. Woohoo! All right, so that's exciting. So this is someone that is perhaps amiable to requesting agriculture. Now, if I wanted to raise agriculture in general, uh, let's say it was a highly developed biological planet, uh, but it wasn't necessarily zoned for farming. 
I could do a sector expansion request. That would actually increase the total level. Um, but I don't want to really do that because I have plenty of infrastructure. I mean, there's a lot of farms and such sitting around. I just don't have people working on them. So this person likes, let's spend a little bit of time with Isabel. Let's, uh, let's have a personal conversation. Now, this, what this does is it lets me get to know her a little bit. Um, I spend a little time with her. Now, this is obviously on a vid screen. But uh, one of the parts of Imperia is that you have uh, latent uh, psychic abilities. And the more time you spend with characters, uh, the more you get to know them. Your, your uh, uh, understanding of their traits improves. And you can also, if you have enough uh, exposure with them, you can read what's called their psi stream. This is their thoughts. So they may be telling you one thing here, saying they love you and how great you are. But over here, this is what's going to tell you what they really think. Um, and then down here, this is their continuum rating. Now, you can't see it. You need a fairly high psi rating with that particular character. Uh, but this will show you where on the continuum they fall. We talked earlier about uh, you as an emperor can rule as a benevolent um, empire uh, uh, plus type of emperor. So this would be a nationalist type of leaning. Or you can rule as a brutal dictator who cares not a whit for your citizens and pops and just want to oppress and make as much money as you can. That would be a tyrannical leader. So you will have a sort of affinity with characters that have a similar uh, place on this continuum. So if you are talking to someone who leans tyrannical and you are a tyrannical emperor, they will like you more generally, all things being equal. Uh, consequently, uh, nationalist people will not like you very much at all, and vice versa. So you have to look at that when you're looking at characters. So we've still got about five ADM, so we've got some things that we can do. So it looks like they're willing to do that. So we'll see what kind of effect that has. Um, in the meantime, let's back out. And let's go back and what's the other one? Uh, Columbus. Okay, so they're about 15%. So let's Jerry take a look at what's going on with active. Columbus. All right, same thing. Pretty similar situation. Habitability is low. Um, they have employment. Now, here's something a little bit different. Okay, they have sign. Now, huh, retail. Retail is absolutely hurting. Now, you can't do a lot with retail directly. Um, you cannot yet talk to a viceroy since retail is a very kind of diffuse. I mean, you're talking about all the restaurants, shops, gas stations, malls, um, online shopping. I mean, anything that has to do with retail and commerce, uh, it's a very diverse type of uh, sector. It's not one that you can just throw money at. Um, so what you can do, and this is uh, mainly during, if all the other jobs are good, you see how low the desirability is. Um, you really can't directly raise retail monthly wage. That kind of comes with supply and demand. So one thing that you can do is, since we have enough ADM, takes five to do an ADM, we can stimulate a specific economic sector. So we can go in, and we can go to the edit creation screen, and we can go to retail, and it takes six ADM to actually roll this. This is actually correct. I haven't, there's a little bug here that's showing the wrong one. It, it scales to the size of the, the sector and to the planet. So we see this is the sector capital, so uh, there is no sector or system capital involved. Um, and obviously, because we are already at the sector capital, then it's over at the planet. So we have enough uh, materials. It's only 28,000 required. So we're going to be able to go ahead, and that entire um, ADM can be absorbed by the planet. And it's going to be a very quick to do. I've, I've actually changed it so that you can see some, some, some different things. Um, we're going, to, we're going to use some pragmatic, not that it's going to make a huge amount of difference, but we'll put uh, one point of pragmatic uh, influence in there. Nationalists would be more effective if I was actually popular and powerful, which I am not, so we're not going to do that. So we'll go ahead and put that in. All right, we're out of admin, so let's go. Change the screen a little bit. shows you how many people you have, how many sectors. Just a little bit of fluff. All right. Your empire awaits your so, one thing I forgot to mention in the first video, this is your alert bar. Right now you don't have any alerts. When you do, this will flash green. It will slowly kind of pulse. All right, so let's see what's, if it's made any difference. Oh, look, Columbus uh, has gone down quite a bit. But we were looking at Maya. All right, so let's see if anything's happened with um, agriculture. Okay, well, yes, it has. We've added 40,000 jobs because we added increased the wage increased to 2452 the desirability increased a little bit so you see it had a direct impact on employment and there's no change here there's no change here so we directly took people out of unemployment now unfortunately because we're paying more wages now we're losing we're, we're, we're taking less profit so we're actually losing more money in the long run but 
it depends on what we want our uh, priorities to be. If we want to keep unrest low and our people happy, then sometimes we just have to bite the bullet. And as you can see up here, um, we are doing quite well on cash flow, six tenths of a trillion dollars per, per, per month. So uh, we're not really hurting there. Now, in, in, in the next few versions, you're going to know a lot more about your finances. Uh, the finance page here will show you basically where all the money is coming from, what your sectors are contributing, what your systems are contributing, your planets, and you'll be able to see uh, your entire empire uh, budget. So that's coming soon. Okay, so I like they're doing okay. So let's go back to Columbus. Let's see how long that's taking. Okay, so it's in status and committee. Now, a couple of ways you can see stimulating economy. Looks like it's going to take one more month. Um, so I really don't have to do anything as far as uh, push characters, anything like that. So let's see what else we can do. Now, our, our um, popular support has gone up just a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so let's see, what, what other opportunities do we have? Well, Carnegie is out of space, but there's really not much you can do about that. Let's take a look over here. All right, so one thing that is a good project is to start giving your system and sector capitals uh, a lot more of, um, basically, they need a lot of ADM. So um, we can actually go to the screen. Okay, we can look at Columbus. They have 15 ADM. Uh, Maximus is uh, 21 in Churchill. Uh, Caesar is 23. Okay, so uh, you can kind of see, and here's Savo Island out by itself. Wow, they're really hurting. So let's go to Savo. Let's see if there's anything we can do for old Savo Island. Okay, we'll go to Bernard Star. That's the sector capital. This very, very pathetic, out in the middle of nowhere sector. It's this, this poor planet. All right, so all these viceroy, system governor. Sector Governor, they're all stuck on Bernard Star because there's no other planets, there's nowhere else for them to go. So we go into production, we look into our government, and you can see that uh, the desirability is extremely high. I mean, people, I mean, the wages are, are outrageous, but uh, unfortunately, there is no rush to work for the government, and unemployment is very low. People are pretty happy where they're at. Even, even the retail sector is doing pretty well. Part of this is the uh, popular support of your viceroy, and to a lesser extent, your system and sector governors. If the popular support is low, then people will not be as willing to work for the government of that particular group, and you to an extent, even if they pay well. It's not always about pay. You have to put people in that are, um, you know, that like you and that your people like in return. All right, so let's see what we can do about this. Let's talk to Mr. Lena. Oh, no. What do you want? I'm busy. She does not like me very much. So, let's see if we can expand the planetary gun. We'll see if she's up for that. Oh, that would be silly. We're running a deficit as it is. I won't do it. Well, I don't think she likes me very much. Um, so, we're going to have to do some different things here. We're going to have to talk to Miss Jolene Jackson. Let's see. Oh, look. Your Excellence, your wish is my command. What glorious plan might I execute for you this cycle? She likes me. Uh, sometimes you can get hints for how they feel about you based on their, their patter. All right, let's see if we can't pressure our subordinate. Uh, let's see. Let's, well, the only, the only subordinate I have is Elena. All right, you got it. You excellent. Just tell me what, when, and where, and I'll explain your position to Elena. I'll turn the screws good. Well, that's nice. As you can see, she's cruel. Uh, I knew that going in, so that's a plus. That, that Usually people that are cruel and craven and have these kind of traits are more likely to pressure. Now, they did accumulate a little bit of fatigue. So let's go back to Elena. Let's see. All right. So we put 15 pressure on Elena now. So let's see if we can expend that pressure to now let's expand planetary government. Oh, still still didn't work. All right. So uh, actually that is one. I have not programmed the pressure on that one yet. That's right. So I have to show you. I'll show you that next turn. I'll do uh, one of the actions that does show pressure. So when you pressure someone, one thing that's very important to remember is it slowly devolves over time. So, see, remember she had 15 pressure on her? So now when we go in, she's down to 9. Because it doesn't, you can't, you can't squeeze someone forever. You know, eventually, if you don't do anything with it, it sort of fades away. All right, so we're going to, uh, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to lower income taxes. We're going to see if, uh, yes. That would be silly. We're running a deficit as is. I won't do it. Besides, how dare you attempt to strong arm me on this issue? <laughs> how dare I indeed? Well, it wasn't very much pressure. Uh, nine is not very much. You, you need something in the order of 40, 50, 60. You can go as high as 200 or 300 if you 
have sector governors and you know multiple system governors uh, applying pressure. So um, nine is really not going to do anything. So she's going to remember this, and this is not going to help our relations. So it's just something to think about. Now you can persuade, and persuasion usually works a lot better. So let's see if I can get someone to persuade. Let me have, yeah, let me see, Billy. Emperor, I got your back. What you need? I'll take care of it. All right. Well, let's see if we can persuade uh, Elena. Sounds great. I'd be happy to support your position to Elena. Okay, good. And he's about, he's fatigued uh, 20 points. So obviously he put in some work. Go back to Elena. Okay, we've got 21. So let's see now. Let's see now if she's willing to lower industrial taxes. Okay. Still, that would be silly. She won't do it. She's big on deficit reduction. Um, sometimes characters, if there's a deficit, uh, they, they absolutely will not lower taxes or do anything that would reduce the revenue stream. Some will, depends on their traits. But here he says, well, I don't see your point of view on this particular quest. I do appreciate your statesman effort to show your side of the argument. And that means that I didn't succeed, but she appreciated that I used persuasion, so that's going to help my relations with her a little bit. It's not going to help it as much as I heard it by using pressure, but it's better than nothing. All right, so I've spent a month basically of doing nothing. Isn't that great? You see how quickly uh, things can change. So let's go back. All right, uh, Mayas, 24.6. We're going to check in on uh, uh, agriculture one more time and see if anything has come up. Uh, okay, continues to climb. 70,000 more jobs. So that's definitely, that's definitely helping. So eventually, hopefully, that will continue to lower unemployment. So total unemployment, 24.6. Another thing we want to look at is if people are moving in. Now, right now, nobody's moving in. You can see there's no trend. If you hover over the uh, population, you can see that there was a million people born and a million people died. So it's kind of a net change. Um, if you go out to the sector, you see these numbers where it says plus one million, plus one million. Uh, this is people that are immigrating and emigrating to the different planets. So here's a Neo, see two million, one million. Right now, people are pretty happy. So there's not a lot of big changes to that. Um, as people get more unhappy, uh, you will probably see more. Now you can see stimulate economic sector. Uh, this is two out of two months, so this should be going live here pretty soon, which is good because they're losing a lot of money. All right, next turn. One thing about Imperia, right now it's more of a sandbox game. I would, I would equate it kind of to Dwarf Fortress and to seeing how long you can keep your empire stable. Uh, eventually it will fall. Uh, but it's kind of fun to see how many years you can keep it up. Now, eventually, you will be able to, uh, those research that you can take to live forever. And there's actually a subplot uh, involving aliens that I've, I've, I've spoiled right there, but I'm not going to say too much more about it. But it ties in with the rest of the history. So, all right, stimulate economic sector is going active next month. Woohoo. Okay, we have no alerts. There's nothing critical going on. So, um, let me look and see. All right, my political allies. So I've got a sector governor. Now, over time, if you don't uh, do anything with these people, then they start to lose. Um, basically, they, they lose their support for you if you never talk to them or do anything. So we probably let's go talk to the sector governor, uh, Jess Hawkins. Let's see what she's got to say. All right, Your Excellence, I'm aware of your little games you're playing with your people. Your recklessness with your ministers will eventually be the end of you. I recommend that you allow things to proceed as they have. Okay. So this is her way of saying, hey, I know you're strong-arming people. It's getting around. You better stop. Um, so there is a, a, this is a fairly complex uh, character dynamic already. Um, it's going to get a lot more complex. So what you're seeing kind of scratches the surface. So, okay, let's give a praising speech because that's, I have 2.4 nationalist. And I want to be a more nationalist ruler. So giving a praising speech, as you can see, this one up just a little bit. Oh, Your Excellence, words are but a breath of hot air. I will not begrudge you their use, but nor will I be swayed further to your cause. Okay, so I didn't give a very good speech, most likely. So we can look at this. We can look at uh, charisma. Oh, look, I have a very low charisma. Look at me. So if I look at my statistics and, and I have a very low charisma, uh, or a low intelligence, it may not be the best thing for me to go out there and stump for people because I'm kind of stupid and I don't speak well. Uh, now, eventually you will have the ability to train uh, this area. You'll be able to take classes and, and improve these statistics, hopefully, but it will take admin and money. So something to consider, but these will not stay static forever. And these actually do change throughout the game as you get older and learn more skills. Okay, well, that didn't work so well. So let's go back. To her let's see what else we can do let's see let's give her an honor now this is kind of like knights uh, back in the day you could uh, knight people and, and give them titles and this worked well um, this is good for a quick um, basically a, a bump 
in people's uh, likings to you. Everybody likes to be knighted. Now, the one thing, this is considered tyrannical, and other characters can be jealous. There are limits to how many of these you can give out. I believe it's uh, six star knights, three grand knight, and one galaxy knight. Um, and there's only, so there's only one galaxy knight uh, per, per empire. So um, just a quick way to give a title. All right. So we've given it, plus it costs you money, just FYI. So it doesn't come out of the... Uh, Empire Treasury. Your Excellence is honors no more than I deserve, but I will still treasure it. See, so now she's now Star Knight Jess Hawkins. So everything you see with her, um, you now see she's Star Knight. So this is something she she basically has a little bit more pull around the um, Empire, and she will be more loyal to you going forward. But again, uh, you'll have a limited amount of these to give. Now, I don't have it in this version, but uh, you will be able to take these away uh, when you do that. Obviously, that will make the former owner very angry. So something else to consider. Okay, well, we're out of again. So let's go ahead and hit next. As you can see, and I actually did bump up the ADM. In the Your first version, you'd only have five or six sense. ADM. I'll probably end up bumping it even more as you have even more to do. Probably still start out with 12 or 15 ADM because there will be a lot to do, and you don't want to be too limited. Okay, so this is completed. So now let's go into, let's take a look at the government. All right, so now you see the admin went up a little bit. Uh, 157 million workers. Now we have 77.1. The desirability has come up, and now we have the multiplier. This is the big one. The multiplier has increased um, because it's a sector capital, but also because we um, we basically pushed um, the, pushed that on it. All right, so let's go to Savo Island, and that should have also pushed. Planetary command nexus uh, uh, Government, yes. Okay, so we're sorry, we're fully employed, uh, 99.8. So we really need to increase the government. So we're going to talk to the person that hates us, and we're going to see if they raise the sector for me. I'm sorry, it's being planetary government. Nope, still won't do it. Okay, so we're going to have to go another way. We're going to have to enact planetary infrastructure stimulus. Um, nope, sorry. Stimulate economic sector. Planetary infrastructure gives you an entire boost to the entire planet uh, in proportion to their designation. This one hits a specific sector hard. So we're going to go to government. And now it costs 2 ADM because, again, it's a small planet. So they will be able to bear that. Oh, 40 months. He, he does, she doesn't like me very much. So we have to kind of figure something out here. Uh, would it be more, would it be easier maybe to just have the government do this? 53 months because again I'm, I'm not very powerful so it looks like we need to it looks like we need to schmooze with uh, Miss uh, Intar so we'll go ahead and we'll add some uh, prag no, pragmatic yeah so as you can see this is pragmatic influence is just day-to-day -day influence it's knowing government it's knowing who to talk to it's not gonna really help you or hurt you from a tyrannical versus nationalist level so uh, it's good to use early in the game all right Yes, yes. All right, so let's, uh, we got two ADM, really not much else I can do, so let's get out. All right, so now we're getting to 36. Now, as you can see, my my uh, popular sport is increasing. That's nice because I get a little bonus for the first couple of years. Uh, people are willing to give me the benefit of the doubt. All right, oh, stimulate economic sector is going active next month. That's good. So she must, uh, sometimes if it's a... Um, edict that they like or support even though they don't like you very much they will still support it so that'll be good um, so but we're still going to talk to Lena anyway we're going to let's have a personal conversation it was an interesting chat your excellence truly an enlightening experience for me at least oh look she's publicly opposed so I've driven her into basically into the opposition's arms so now if we go over here we now have a political enemy oh no my my, my speech did not uh, really backfire on me, it seems. So I'm going to need to figure out some other things to do. All right, so we are going to... Let's see if giving her imperial honor will help. Yeah, okay, a little bit. Now, I still don't know her loyalty, so I need to spend more time with her uh, if I'm going to kind of focus on this particular planet. Um, we'll have another personal conversation, trying to get to know her a little bit better. All right, next turn. 
and we'll see what that does to the government. Your empire awaits, your Back to Savo. And a big part of this, one thing I find is fun in this Planetary game is picking a system or sector active. that is having issues, and you can spend a lot of time, it, it, almost to the point where you forget your other uh, sectors. Now, the good news is, if you have good people, they will pretty much self-run. Uh, your job is just to kind of get in there and tweak as needed. Um, so it's not micromanaging. A lot of the data that you see, a lot of people go and like, oh, look at all these, look at all these numbers and boxes. The reality is, you don't have to use them if you don't want to. This is only to help you see, and to help you understand what's going on. So, um, you know, there's that. All right. So we go to um, government. Okay. So we selected the governor. So you see the desirability has come up. You see the monthly wage has, has increased. Um, you see the max workers has also increased. So there's more room for people to work. There's absolutely no unemployment on the planet, which is good. You see the ADL is very low. That means these wages, these are outrageously high wages. Um, so people are living well. This will probably start to affect the demographics. People will start to come. And yet, as you can see, here's the positive. Very low unemployment. It's trade hub, major government receipt. One problem, there are very high income taxes. So we need to start, uh, we need to start, uh, um, well, actually, we can't get people out here because it's, it's too far out in the middle of nowhere. So... The only way we're going to grow our population is by having babies um, as people die. So, uh, cover here, you see births last turn 1 million, no deaths. Very lucky last month. All right, so let's see what we can do about, um, so there's no unrest issues, planet, popular support is indifferent. We're going to add a little bit of intel. Let's try and get a little bit more information about what's going on. All right, now this uh, intel budget, it, it, it scales based on the size of the population and the amount of uh, levels that you're trying to get. I'm also going to go ahead and build an informer network. I'm going to see if I can do something to maybe get rid of Elena because I'm thinking, I'm thinking she's not going to play ball, and I'm thinking the system and sector governors are not going to help me very much. So we're going to go the intel route. So I'm going to bump this up to level three, and let's see. <laughs> what do you want? I'm busy now. Here you can see the Psy stream. I've spent enough time with her. Now you can see I hate you, sir, um, and she's leaning just a little bit tyrannical. It's pretty much dead in the middle. So we wouldn't have a problem as far as our affinities, but she just doesn't like me very much. All right, so I'm not going to mess with her too much more. I'm going to, I'm probably going to kill her or blackmail her or bribe her or do something on that end. Let's see if she takes a bribe. I appreciate the donation. Rest assured it will go towards worthy causes. Okay, great. Let's give her some more money. Yes, just continue generosity. I don't know what to say. Oh wait, yes I do. Hand it over. So she's bribable. That's interesting. Good to know. All right, but that's not going to help us. All right, so we're done. Next turn. All right, so things are still pretty, still pretty calm. Now you see up here, I've got a flashing one. So I'm going to go. The intel level has increased, and there's our information. Our domestic intelligence network is successfully upgraded to level one. All right, so we go to Bernard Star. Now one level doesn't actually get you anything. Um, you actually have to go to level two in order to start seeing things. Um, you'll be able to see intel on unrest factors. Uh, you'll also get more information on the popular support. And then if you at level four, you'll actually see the, the levels, but it's a lot more expensive. All right, so let's go back to our planets. Let's see if there's anything going on. Okay, so we see that Columbus, remember that was 9%. The good news is the unemployment's low. The bad news is that they're, they're now bankrupt because they've been, their, their wages are way too high for uh, what they could support. Um, Maya has gone down. See, now Carnegie is starting to creep up at 21.7% um, because there's really no room for it to grow, and Primus has no room whatsoever to grow. Everything else is looking pretty good. You also see at Carnegie there's actually nominal unrest, so the Viceroy is, is saying there's a little bit of unrest going on, so we may Planetary want to take a look. Okay, so David Zageb. The unrest is nominal. So let's, first of all, let's get a little bit of intel in there, let's see what's going on because I'm a little nervous about that. Let's go ahead and build our informer network. Now, this money, this 50000 comes out of your personal treasury, and you do get more every year. It's kind of like allowance that you get once a year. All right, let's talk to David. Let's see, let's see what's going on. We're kind of worried down here, Your Excellency. Something about a distinct lack of food. If you don't do something soon, I'm going to start ripping up labs and factories to grow some food. Okay, well, maybe that's why they're unhappy. So they probably need some food. So let's take a look at production. Yeah, 27 months. They're getting kind of low. They still have two years, almost three years, but uh, when you run out of food or when you get close to running out of food, something odd happens. People start to get incredibly nervous about that, and so you want to kind of fix that as soon as possible. Now, 
they have a low this is a desert planet so this is probably not going to be a great agriculture planet as you can see it's level five um, but it's only putting out 75 tons of food uh, and you need 623 uh, in order to make up that deficit per month so most likely what's going to have to happen uh, either terraforming or we're going to have to build a station to, to bring food in. Now this is the system capital so let's see let's go in the system. Now are there any other planets that could perhaps bring food? Uh, Bio 44 that doesn't look good. It's another desert planet and two gas giants. What a crappy system. Well oh well your, your, your predecessors made some dumb choices what can we say? Alright so since we don't have anything in the system that can grow food we have a couple options. Uh, we can look at uh, terraforming. Uh, actually, we can't terraform because we don't have a star base. Uh, that is most unfortunate. All right, so we are going to have to pretty much... Actually, there's a bug. It should give me the option to build a uh, logistical station, uh, but it has not done that. But that is what I would do. I would build a logistical station basically to um, allow this planet to at least receive some materials. So that is a bug. I will fix that before the release. Uh, you would also have the option to build a uh, star base. Uh, oh, you know what? I know why. Because I know exactly why. It's not a bug. Carnegie is not within the, um, the radius to build. There is no way for them to get a star base out there. So that's why. That's why. It's actually not a bug. Okay. So, a couple things we can do. Um, we can change this system. We can now, we can attach it to a different sector because Rubicon is not able to, to uh, support that planet. It's kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. You see it's between the two. Another option we have is we could build, well, there's no detected planets. Let's say there was a planet, so then we could build a logistical station in this system that would cover Congo. But unfortunately, there's no planet, so Congo is kind of in a bad position. And Dante is unscanned, so we don't know, but it wouldn't reach anyway. So, so we probably need to maybe build something at Maximus to help out. Okay, there are no trade. There's no trade network here, so you can see um, there's no circle, which means there's no trade network. So we need, probably need to look at building. This is our s sector capital here, Churchill. Uh, they have, let's see, 21 ADM. Let's go ahead. Let's build. Okay, here it is. Build up great star base. Build up great logistical station. So, um, a logistical st uh, station is only going to serve this one planet um, to be able to receive goods, while a star base will actually allow the, the the mission circle to happen. So let's go ahead and build a star base because we can really use one here. Now you see, it takes a lot of materials. All right, so 19 months, so they like me pretty good. Let's see, do I know anything about their loyalty? No, I do not. Probably need to spend a little time with her and schmooze. Let's put a little, uh, I'm getting a little bit more popular, so nationalist is going to be a little, bit of, a little bit more effect. You see, that makes a big difference. Take one month. Now, this is an estimate, too. This does not mean that it's going to take one month. This is your viceroy, yes, your uh, basically your regent, telling you that this is what they believe. So just let's grease benevolent and decisive. So a star base is good. So benevolent characters will welcome a star base. Actually, most will welcome a star base. Um, let's have a personal conversation. Okay, and we're done. Now remember, personal conversations are not as um, effective if you have low charisma. So you're not seeing a whole, whole lot of, of things coming. All right, so we're approaching our first year. Now, I do want to show you every three months... Um, your viceroys will go and look at their economic plan and they will adjust it. So let's go into the uh, planet display. Now you see these little up and down arrows. Every three months, this is a state-run economy except for retail. So they will decide whether to expand the manufacturing, agriculture, science sectors uh, on their own, depending on their traits and how the planet is uh, designated. So if it's a manufacturing designated, it'll be a lot more likely to get manufacturing. If it's an agriculturally designated, uh, it'll be more likely to have farms. So now we have two planets that are going bankrupt. Um, and again, I've kind of changed these settings uh, so that we can have something to do. It's not just click, 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 because that's not a very fun Let's Play. So we can see that, uh, remember the changes we made to Mayan Columbus, how we uh, 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 expanded a sector, we created economy, see it worked. So now unemployment's down to nothing. 
Um, but of course, one of them's bankrupt and one of them's losing a little bit of money. Remember how I said that uh, it may not be a good long-term strategy to throw money at a problem? <clears throat> there are several different ways to approach problems, both benevolent and, and not so much. So, okay. So with this manufacturing expanding, Carnegie Planetary is now Nexus completely active. maxed out. There is no more room to grow. The only way this planet can grow is if A, their uh, Viceroy develops the planner trait, which is uh, a really good trait to have. It, it, it makes for a much more intelligent expansion, and they can find new uh, resources. Or by um, terraform. But guess what? Carnegie can't terraform because, I guess, we have figured out they're kind of in no man's land, so um, they can't get those supplies. All right, so, okay, 33 months in planning. Yeah, that's a little bit more likely. Um, sometimes the... the, the Regent uh, is a little bit too practical. I'm trying to make that a little bit more uh, to where it's a little bit more accurate. Uh, I don't want to give away too much. Um, I don't want you to be able to necessarily go in and know how a, a viceroy feels about you by how long things take. I mean, there's something to that. But I want it to be at least a little bit more useful when you're doing your planning. Okay, so we really need to work with Miss Isabel Edwards to make this happen. Hiding behind the shield of nationalist pride, Your Excellency will work for the people, but it won't do a damn thing for me. Well, you're a little bitch. What can I say? All right, so what that tells me is she uh, doesn't like me very much. Uh, I am nationalist. I've been doing nationalist. I'm very, just a little bit nationalist here. And she's nationalist too, which is good, but she does not like me. Here's your side stream. Just wait, just biding my time. That's not good. She's not going to like me very much. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to have any more personal conversations with her. I probably need to... Let's see. Did I... Did I put Intel? Active. Okay. Nope. Network inactive. All right. So we're going to put a little bit more... I'll put a little bit more network here. All right. So we may need to... Now, I haven't put it in yet, but one thing you'll be able to do, not in the next release, but probably by 0.5, you'll be able to ask for support for a specific edict. And that will be a, an option, a conversation option. So you'll be able to click on it and say, I, you know, the option will be support edict. And then you'll have a list of the edicts that are active that they have a, a part of. And it'll work much like any other. And it can be pressured or persuaded. Uh, another option you'll have is to promise favor. What that does is you're essentially telling the, the character, I'm going to promise you a favor to be determined. And then at some point in the future, that character will come to you in an alert with a favor, uh, what's called the want-wish system. It might be something basic. It might just be to build a star base. It might be um, money. It might be something a lot more, like put me on a planet that has at least 200 value. It might be promote me to a system governor. And you have to decide whether or not you're willing to do that within a certain amount of, of months. So, And if you don't, and they have ties to other people that don't like you, uh, they may uh, plot against you. If you. So it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward kind of option. So I'm, that's going to be fun. All right, so so we're going to kind of figure out. So in the meantime, not a whole lot we can do about that now, since the star base is completed and they're the only one that's a part of it. So we're going to look and see. Um, first of all, we're going to look and see. Okay, so Viceroy, she still hates me. I've still kept my support with my system sector governors. Now we haven't talked a lot about the military yet. Um, we may want to go into Primus. Now here we don't have any. We don't even have a, a garrison on Primus, so uh, you will be able to move armies. Uh, to different planets, uh, but they have to be in the same sector. You cannot move armies out of a sector um, unless they're uh, from New Terra. Those you can move, if they're Imperial troops, you can move them anywhere in the Empire. Um, so, let's see, do we get any alerts? We got three alerts. All right, Planet Primus at maximum development level. <laughs> yeah, so there's no room. Okay, and then Carnegie's upgraded to level one. All right, so nothing that we don't really know. All right, so yeah, we need to figure Planetary out what's going on in Primus. All right, so most likely, okay, so we've lost a lot of manufacturing jobs. Now this is an ADL of seven, so it's a reasonably developed world. We may want to try increasing the wage, but of course, uh, the planet treasury is 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 not looking too healthy. Making a decent retail sector, and the government subsidy is low because there's not a lot of admin for a sector capital. This is actually pretty pathetic. Um, that's probably something to look at. We probably want to create more jobs. Um, but yeah, everything's kind of losing money. And, and for a military production world, that's unusual. But here's the problem. Our strategic rating is zero. So whoever decided this should be a military production world was a freaking idiot. So that is what we need to change. We need to find a different um, 
designation. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to change it to, actually, what do I say? Well, 69 habitability. So we could terraform and then change it to a bio world. Um, we could make a penal prison world. If you have a problem with unrest and you're feeling very tyrannical, you can designate a planet. Actually, the, the desert planet um, might be a good place for that. Uh, it's considered extremely tyrannical, though. And uh, governors that are considered tyrannical will send their um, pops that have high unrest and that are rioting. They will arrest them and send them to this world. So uh, we don't need to do that right now. Let's make a governmental nexus because we need to we need more admin for this sector. This is a pretty important sector. It's a core sector. Um, now it is considered a tyrannical act because people generally consider more government a bad thing. So we need nine ADM to do that. So as you can see, we only have three because our planet stinks. The rest of it will have to come from the Empire. So Billy White, we don't know how they feel about us. If they liked us a lot, we might go ahead and use this ADM. But since we don't, we're just going to go ahead and have the Empire foot the bill. Now you can see how much materials are used. And it costs, even though um, it's 9 ADM, 9 times 5, it costs 45 ADM. So it's very inefficient to have the Empire use their ADM. But that's why they have a lot of it. Sometimes you have planets that just, you don't have any other choice because they're just too undeveloped and they don't have that uh, sector system infrastructure built yet. All right, so it's a lot of materials. We used almost a third of our materials. And it's going to cost $4.7 billion. Ooh, gosh. That's a lot. But the good news is it won't take very long to complete. So let's be a little tyrannical. And let's, let's kind of hurry that up a little bit. Let's use some, let's use some uh, tyrannical pool, shall we? Yes. All right. Yes, yes. So that's going to really hurt our cash flow, I promise you, when we go um, and then look at that. And you'll be able to see more of that in the budget screen. Okay, so it's going to look at two months. Let's see how our, let's see how our, um, where, oh, here it is. Sorry, one of 33 months, so we're still there. All right, so we're going to go to a new turn. Now we're about to enter a new year. Your empire awaits your excellence. All right, so how long was that going to take? See, one out of four months. Okay, so it's not going to take very long, but you see um, our, our, our cash flow. Actually, it went up 1.77 trillion. Uh, because we're getting a lot of money from, we've got some uh, places that are finally starting to go positive. Well, so that's, that's good. And, all right, still nominal. All right, so two out of 49 months. See, this is going the wrong way. <laughs> the Viceroy definitely does not like me. All right, let's see what alerts. The Intel level, uh, Churchill's increased, Carnegie Bernard Star, level two. Level two, level one. All right, so we need to, yeah, we need to, we need to get that level up. We need to do something better. Definitely. We need to get her out of here. That is not helping. All right, so another way you can go, you can go to the next screen. You can see the Intel network, and this will show you how many informers are active and how many in total. Now, when you have low um, popular support and low power, it takes longer to get informers. So that's why power, this number here, is the underpinnings of so much that you do. That's why it's so important to build a network of people that are loyal to you. So one thing you can do is you can go into your characters and you can look at who's got the high power. Well, Kelly Caramonica, ooh, 136, system governor of New Terra. All right, she does not seem to like me very much. Is there anything I can do? Maybe I can give her an imperial honor. Yeah, maybe I can bribe her. No, I cannot bribe her. She's honest. That's not good. Which means probably requesting kickbacks wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, let's talk to her a little bit. Okay, so I'm out of power. So it, you, you want to build these relationships. There's so much that you can do in any given turn. Um, it does start to get uh, to be quite a bit. So now we're entering into year one. And now we're starting year two. All right, so 68 months. Boy, it's getting worse and worse because she, she hates me. See, if you see here, it says 65 months. It started out at 33, and it keeps going up because this, this chick does not like me at all. So I click on her, hide behind the shield, indecisive. She's very nationalist, and you can see I'm a little bit tyrannical, so that's not helping either. At this point, there's not a lot I can do. Um, I don't have the option in yet, but now, oh, but look, something happened. Let's go to up here. Informers activated on Churchill. So now I have informers available, which means I can now do something to this lady, hopefully. So let's go to Churchill, and let's go to Intel. And you see I have one available informer. 
and this is informer is probably not the best word it's more like probably more like black ops agents so now you see I have a button that I need to change over assign Intel asset so when I click this something a couple things are gonna happen number one I'm gonna see their popular support you see here their surveillance is active um, so they're very popular so they're benevolent uh, they're nationalist people the the people love them so if I kill her or if I try to kill her and it's found out that is not gonna go well with the people and that's probably gonna lead to some riots so I can attempt to assassinate her and it costs five tyrannical influence you can see because I've been doing a lot of tyrannical things I have uh, quite a bit of tyrannical um, pool and the, the maximum pool level is 25 for any given so you can't just keep accumulating it well I'm gonna be a bastard I'm gonna go ahead and try to assassinate her so you see the little target here so now she she's um, we're, we're attempting to assassinate her now this doesn't work as well when they have high popular support uh, there's also some other factors uh, the type of planet uh, the more uh, informers that you have, uh, the better. You don't actually get to assign how many. What you can, what happens is you have a pool, and then you say, "I'm going to assign assets," and that your uh, intelligence prime will actually assign those assets. So you don't have a lot of control over that. You can't say, "I want five on this person and two on this one." So uh, it's a little bit, little bit out of your hands. Okay, so we'll have to see what goes on with that now. I showed you now we're at current level two domestic intelligence. Remember I said earlier that uh, higher levels get you more information. So now we can put our tooltip and now we can start to see what the people are saying um, about why they feel the way they do. Okay, we have a negative income taxes are very high, double positive. We feel safe and happy that we have strong defenses on our planet. And yes, they have a garrison that's providing 429 ground defense. So uh, if I were to disband this army, uh, they would not feel quite so happy. They would actually be upset that there is no, no garrison. Um, they're broke. We're not too fond of borrowing from the sector treasury. So you can see they're bankrupt, and that does not help. That actually, um, actually is a double negative. Uh, we are so lucky to live on such a beautiful planet. There are plenty of opportunities to find work. We have a great viceroy who seems to really care about us, which, which we showed you earlier. And we're still giving the kid a chance. It's a little less than one. This is your bonus, your second year bonus uh, to your popular support, where... The first year you get a big bonus because you're new, plus it helps the game. The second year you don't get as much of a bonus. All right, so really not a whole lot more that I want to do here. I do want to look at the economic. Now I haven't changed up these yet. You can kind of see that the cash flow, a negative 143 million. Where is all that money going? Um, well, we're not making a lot of money. That's the problem. Our industry tax rate. We're not bringing in a lot of revenue because our sector profits, this only works with sector profits. This is 39 million. This is basically retail. Um, so thank goodness our, 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 thank goodness our, our retail uh, sector is doing well. This is a fairly high ADL. Uh, if our luxury rating was higher or we could ship in better m minerals, it would be even higher. If this luxury rating was like 80 or 90, this would be making probably 100 to 150 million and that would probably solve our problems, but unfortunately it's not. So again, you have lots of options. I might go in here, resurvey for uh, luxury minerals. Cost 20 ADM though. I don't have 20 ADM, and I don't think I want to spend a huge amount of the Empire ADM, so I think I'd rather just get the star base and start building it that way. Another option is I could delete the Edict, but I lose all those minerals that I committed from the Empire, and that's a hard, that's a lot to recover from, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm just gonna look for other ways. So we look at the cash flow, 288 billion in uh, social subsidy. Wow, where's all that coming from? So we look at governor expense and we see, well, 125 million towards uh, the active edict, and that's pretty much the biggest thing. Star bases are really expensive to build, so that's why you tend to want to build them when you have a strong base. Um, everything else is not a lot. Government admin cost, and we probably want to lower that. Um, in fact, that's probably not a bad idea. She probably won't do it, though. <laughs> what do you want? I'm busy. She hates me. Uh, <laughs> reduce planetary government. Oh, okay. Your will be done. That's odd. Usually they wouldn't do that. But she obviously, uh, being benevolent, uh, has a greater chance of doing these sorts of things. So that's a plus. Let's see if she'll reduce it some more. Yes, your will be done. All right. So now you see the government's admin cost has dropped. So now when we go to the cash flow sub uh, summary, this has dropped somewhat. And when we go to the... Uh, uh, government mill screen the desirability is still increased but now the monthly wage has dropped and you can't see we didn't check it originally um, but it but it did drop so hopefully next turn 
this will probably start to contract the ADM, which is unfortunate, but at least you see the sector employment is 114.2. So we've cut away, we've taken away the max workers. So these people, now here's sort of an unintended side effect. They're going to be unemployed because they're going to be kicked out. So you've just created some unemployment. They're going to have to find somewhere else to work. Fortunately, there's plenty of employment in manufacturing. There's plenty of employment in agriculture. And there's also plenty of employment in science. But look at the desirability. Uh, ain't nothing no good as a ain't nothing like a government job, right? So that may affect some other things. So that may have not have been the best thing to do. Oh well, what's what's a little fun? All right, next turn. So you can kind of hopefully start to see um, that your actions have far-reaching consequences, and that there are a lot of different ways that you can even as early as the game is, as as, as few options as there still are. Uh, we haven't even really touched on the military to unrest riots. Although look, oh here we go. Assassination attempt. Isabel is gone. We love it. Now look how look how tyrannical we're getting. So remember we started over here. We're edging into the red. Uh, oh look, localized riots on Primus. Uh, yeah, I kind of figured that would be a problem. So uh, remember we said uh, unrest was nominal. So now there's localized riots. So localized mean they're not tearing anything up yet. It's basically just um, they're very just basically unhappy. So, oh, unfortunately, we don't have any armies on the planet. Uh, if we did, I could show you that we could use it to crush the rebellion. Um, but let me show you this. Let's go to a planet that does have... We'll go to the new Terra. Actually, we'll go to the Maya army, since I know we're going to have trouble there anyway. All right. So she likes me. She's benevolent. She's the general. Yes, you can have female generals. Um, so one thing you can do is change the army stance. So right now, actually, let's go to, let's go to Maya. Let's do it that way. Uh, okay, it's going to be military. So, the Maya army, right now the stance is on standby. So it's got four assault divisions, three assault divisions, and a mechanized division. So you're talking about 40,000 troops. This is a pretty big army. Um, as you can see that their power is 33, which is not a huge amount, but it's better than nothing. We don't know their loyalty because we really haven't spent any time with them. So, assume that we wanted to uh, protect that say there were riots going on and we felt evil and we wanted to crush the riot. We could actually try to change the stance of this army from standby, which is essentially they're they're not in reserve, but they're not really active either, to something else. So we click on here, to change army stance. Now you see you have peacekeeping, garrison, suppression, or intimidation uh, in order of basically good to bad as far as your citizens. So we're going to try suppression. Now, this is she's a benevolent, so this is probably not going to work because nice generals generally that, that uh, don't like you generally will not do this to their own people. You have to have a certain kind of general in place to do this, especially when it's intimidation. Intimidation is almost like stormtroopers. They're actively killing your citizens to restore order, and uh, many people are not willing to do that. But let's see. Let's try suppression. Your Excellence, I would be fundamentally opposed to switching my armed forces to a suppression stance. You'll have to find someone else to do your dirty work. Yeah, and then, well, that was to be expected. She's, We've already figured out she's benevolent. That probably wasn't going to happen. So we, we probably need to find a... And she's going to not like me as much for asking, unfortunately. So let's see if we can find a general that might be a little more inclined. Uh, River Peterson. Well, we don't know much about her. What do you want? I'm busy. Well, she doesn't like me, so that's not good either. Okay, well, we're out of... ADM. So we'll have to take next turn. Alright. Localized riots on Primus. Oh, significant unrest. High unrest. This will result in decreased production, even people taking up arms. So there's there's a lot going on in Primus. Uh, and see, now here, the instigators have destroyed two levels of industry. So we've got to do something about Primus. Um, Four million. Unrest is some. <clears throat> so we don't have any intel. We don't know why they're unhappy. We haven't bothered to put any intel in, so we're going to do that. Um, we're going to put that in. We're going to build an informer network. And if I had the option, I don't have it in this in yet. I will have it for the release. Um, I would move an army onto this planet from another part of the sector. Um, but right now, I don't have that ability. So you can see the rioting, changing to governmental nexus. Uh, zero months to complete. So, um, yeah, see, four months, four months. So that should be coming in soon. So that will help. Um, but you remember, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, remember how earlier I said uh, the unemployment that we were trying to uh, uh, change and, and, and get more? See, now the unemployment jumped to 13%. 
even though we dropped the uh, the um, the um, ADM. Well, yeah, it, it really didn't help things. So, Planetary all right. Command Nexus active. All right, so we're gonna look at one other thing here. All right, Isabel Welsh. Communication established. All right. Kind of looking at some things here. Planetary Command Nexus active. All right, so let's see how our. Oh, the other thing we're gonna check on is see how our uh, starbase is doing. See, now we have someone that's a little nicer. Now it's only 27 months in planning, so it actually only has 21 months to go. But you see a couple things have happened here. So we've dropped our ADM uh, to 20. So we've, dro we've lost ADM. Um, we have unemployment has stayed low because other people found work. Uh, they're probably not very happy about it, but at least they did find work, so that was good. You can see 280,000 people went to manufacturing. 30,000 went to agriculture. And then the government has stayed steady, um, 99.6, so it's still maximum employment. So uh, that has helped our economic situation a little bit. Remember, it was very high. It's dropped a little bit. So we would probably need to look at raising taxes. Uh, we could talk to Matt Edwards. Let's see, let's see what kind of cut he's made. Thank you for the chance to prove myself, Your Excellence. I really look forward to working with you to rebuild our once great empire. Uh, I look forward to working with you, too. Let's... Let's... Ooh, what are we gonna do? Let's see. Let's see if you're bribable. Oh no! Do you honestly think I would accept something so craven as money from you and this transmission now? All right then, we'll do. Okay, that did not help. Okay, so I probably need to. Okay, I've still got my recruiter. So actually, I can assign assets to him. So he comes in. He's got a pretty high popular support. Um, so we may need to kill him too. You see how low? If you look at my, you see how low, how much tyrannical I'm getting. I lost one of my political allies. Remember, I had five. Uh, I haven't been kind of keeping up with them. So somebody either I lost because they were benevolent uh, or they were uh, pop, uh, nationalist, and, and I'm becoming more evil. Uh, but whatever reason, I lost them. So see, my power is not very high. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and end it here because we're getting on to an hour. But uh, hopefully this has given you some idea of some of the different things that you can do. Uh, I'm going to have a follow-up. Um, let's play. I'm going to actually go ahead and save this game and we will pick it up on next time. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.